10 things to do in Naxos. Trying to describe the stunning nature of Naxos is a hard job, but I'll give it a shot nevertheless. Simply put, it as a paradise on earth. From the amazing mountain scenery to its majestic Venetian towers and Byzantine churches, it is enthralling. The list doesn't end there. Beach types for every taste are available too, each with a beautiful share of pure white sand and crystal blue water. The food too, the food will possibly be the most delicious Greek product you will taste due to the very versatile nature of the land, probably, or their exquisite recipes. Now I don't want to tease you any longer. Let's dig right in and find out what you need to do the moment you step foot in Naxos. Number 10. Visit Valindra's Kitron Distillery. A liquor exclusive to Naxos is called Kitron. This is created by distilling the citron fruit and leaves, a type of citrus fruit not all that dissimilar to lemons. The beverage is widely available on the island, and it's just as commonplace as raki. Bars and gift shops sell it. There are three types, green, which is the sweetest and least alcoholic, yellow, which is the strongest and has the greatest proof, and clear, which falls in the middle of the two. You may travel into the hills to the distillery in the village of Chalkia to observe the production of Kitron for a uniquely Nexus experience. This has been in the Valindris family for five generations and began producing Kitron in 1896. Using unique and antique copper stills and large fermentation jars with wicker baskets, things are still done the old-fashioned way here. At the conclusion, you'll get to sample some Keytron and might be persuaded to buy a bottle to take home. Number 9. Coroi of Flerio. 10 kilometers to the east of Cura in the village of Melanes, there is another incomplete pair of statues from the 7th and 6th century BC that are still in place. While both of their faces have been left blank due to their legs breaking in transit, their bodies are more distinct than the Coros of Apollonas. The first is situated next to a dry stone wall in a picture-perfect village garden. Ancient stone masons indentations may be seen on the body, as well as the broken right leg with the shin and the ankle still attached. The other quarrels is located above the settlement on a marble outcrop in a quarry. This incomplete figure is also located not far from the rock it was carved out of. It was probably dropped as it was about to be transported, and the detached feet rest a short distance from the body. Number 8. Go see Mount Saz. The Cyclades High Peak on Naxos rises to a height of 1,004 meters. Mount Sass may appear intimidating from the village of Filoti, but you don't need to be a skilled mountaineer to climb it. There are two routes that start at the Ahia Maria Church. One is more direct and somewhat more difficult, and the other is lighter and longer. During the climb, there are two caverns and a spring for detours. If you visit with a guide, they will point out the wildflowers and herbs that line the trails in the spring and summer. Make an accent at dust sometimes you'll never forget, but don't forget to bring a torch on the way down. Back around Filoti, there is a clutch of bars and restaurants, some endowed with mountain views. Number 7. Tour the Venetian Museum A private museum about Naxos' Venetian rule from the 13th and the 16th century is housed in one of the finest homes in Citadel. The house, which is 800 years old and was once the military command center for the Venetians before becoming an administrative structure after the Ottoman conquest. The main draw of this establishment is the building itself. 
and you'll get a 40-minute tour of it that takes you into the lobby, dining room, bedroom, library, gallery, study, and onto a balcony with an unhindered view of the Portara. You will then descend to the vaults, which are filled with artifacts from the Venetian era, including jewelry, ceramics, and sculptures. Number 6. Chill at Mikri Vigla People who like their beaches to be long, desolate, and windy flock to Mikri Vigla, which is still only 10 kilometers from Naxos town. The white sand beach, also known as Sahara, extends from the little resort of the same name down to Kastraki and is exposed to the Etesian wind, which sweeps through the cyclades from the north. As a result, kite and windsurfers sail and kites are propelled by low rolling waves. From the comfort of the sand, you can participate or observe. A rocky slope with a wind shelter cove at its base can be found at the beach's northernmost point. A, a bit of digging on the history of the beach shows that it was named after a rocky hill that the local people used as a lookout for pirates. Its blue, clear water deepens as you go forth. The beach is sandy, but people tend to prefer it because it is an organized beach with umbrellas and sunbeds. At a very close distance, there are taverns, hotels, and a room to let. The beach is ideal for families and those who want to relax, swim, and sunbathe. The hill that exists there creates a small natural rocky beach that attracts the attention of people who want to take photos of it. The visitors of the island often characterized it as a paradise on earth. Number 5. Visit Placa Beach. Plans Beach is a long, broad beach on the west coast with just a few buildings and a few dunes in the background. With a length of 4 kilometers, there is enough space for everyone to enjoy some alone time in the sun or to rent a sun launder and take use of the beach bars and taverns that are located behind. Naturists choose the more isolated southern end on the road to Placa, whereas to the north there is water sports facility for wakeboarding, stand-up, paddling, paddleboarding, and windsurfing. Everyone else will be happy to simply float in the clear turquoise water which is even better in person than it appears in pictures. Number 4. Explore Old Town A bewildering maze of alleys, stairways, and corridors rises from the arbor up to the castro. The Old Town, like all the best historic districts, is a place you might roam aimlessly for hours and features lovely white cycladic homes and irregular marble pavement stones. Many of these have dark or light blue painted doors, banisters and window frames, souvenir stores selling handcrafted jewelry and reproductions of ancient cycladic statues are crammed into the chaotic traffic-free hamlet, together with a plethora of taverns, taverns, and cafes. Just keep in mind that the citadel is up and the arbor is down if you ever feel lost. Number 3. Visit Castro The Venetian Duke of the Archipelago Marcus II Sanudo constructed the Citadel of Cora in the 13th century, which is located above the old town. The Castro, which is still partially surrounded by medieval walls, is a tranquil network of tiny flower-filled squares connected by winding lanes that are home to monasteries, churches, and noble residences, some of which still display their coats of arms. You may see the official measure for retailers selling fabric inscribed into a marble pilaster if you enter the Castro through the northern Trani Porta gate. Nikos Kasantzakis 
the finest writer of contemporary Greece, spent a year in school at the Castro School of Commerce, which is now the Naxos Archaeological Museum, a cafe and terrace with a dreamlike view of the sea. The island hills of Naxos and the sea are located in the southern position of the Castro and are accessible through an elevator. Number 2. Visit Quoros of Apollonas, an incomplete 10-meter high monument from the turn of the 7th and 6th century BC, is located in an old marble quarry close to Apollonas in the extreme north of the island. The statue is a Quoros, a man in a nude sculpture that was made throughout the Archaic era. It's exciting to see the piece in its unfinished state, with the cuboids for the arms and a body made of a long, uncarved planes. The beard, eyes, and nose are beginning to take shape on the head. The statue has only been cut free on three sides and is thought to weigh eight tons. A likely theory for the statue's abandonment is that cracks had already begun to form in the marble at this early stage. Number 1. Portara One of the first things you notice as your ship approaches the island is Portara, a seductive landmark for the entire island. The enormous marble frame, spanning 6 meters by 3.5 meters, is all that's left of an Apollon Ionic temple that was begun in the 6th century BC but never completed. It is located on the islet of Palacia, which was formerly a hill on the northwest coast of the island and is now only connected to Naxos port by a causeway. However, this doorway proved to be too heavy to disassemble and move. The remaining stone from the temple was recycled for the Castro Castle of Naxos. Called it cliché, but you may join the crowd of couples pouring to Palacia to watch the sunset behind the island of Paros after dining at the port or the old town. There you have it, Naxos is one of the most exciting places to be and visiting these spots mentioned give you the perfect Naxos experience. Till next time, gracias!